All right, Alexander, let's talk about um, a New York Times story. I'll take this from the New York Times. Um, there's other publications that are, that are reporting on this. But the New York Times uh, has a title saying Trump sought options for attacking Iran to stop its growing nuclear program. The New York Times is saying that President Trump asked senior advisors in an Oval Office meeting on Thursday whether he had options to take action against Iran's main nuclear site in the coming weeks. The meeting occurred a day after international inspectors reported a significant increase in the country's stockpile of nuclear material for current and former U.S. officials said on Monday. We also have, though, a parallel story of Trump drawing down troops from Afghanistan and, uh, and Iraq. Trump admin orders troop drawdown order in Afghanistan and Iraq. This is from Zero Hedge. As was expected, Donald Trump has ordered the Pentagon to accelerate a drawdown of U.S. troops in Afghanistan and Iraq to 2,500 in each nation as the president works to deliver on his longtime pledge to exit endless wars before he leaves office in January. Uh, Acting Secretary of Defense Christopher Miller announced the decision Tuesday to the Pentagon. So this is a reality. Trump is uh, drawing down troops. And hopefully this won't be like uh, what uh, I believe his name is uh, Jeffrey admitted to the other day, which is a huge story that they were playing a shell game with Trump and they weren't really drawing down troops in Syria. I'm sure that Christopher Miller will make this uh, this order come true. But on the flip side, you have this uh, this news story about Trump possibly launching a missile strike or an attack against Iran's uh, nuclear facilities. Um, I've got a couple of theories about this story that's being uh, propagated right now. But Alexander, how do you see things? Well, I, I have to say, first of all, I'm very, very skeptical of anything that comes from anonymous sources. And I think that's the very first point I want to make. Um, no one has, no one in public has admitted it. Nobody exactly has denied it either. So I suspect what has happened is that obviously there was this report from the inspectors. Donald Trump does what a president is supposed to do. He called in his people into the Oval Office. They had a discussion. They discussed options and they went away. I don't think that all this talk about, you know, starting wars, launching strikes, doing all of these things uh, uh, really was ever seriously intended. And bear in mind, Donald Trump himself has been completely quiet about this. There's not been the usual you know, Twitter threats or anything of that kind. So I, I'm, I'm actually rather sceptical perhaps not about the suggestion of a discussion, but, um, you, you know, the, the way that the uh, New York Times and other uh, journals are reporting this, I think they're making this out to be a much bigger thing, far bigger thing than it really was. That's my, that's my view. So I think there was probably a discussion in the Oval Office. I don't think it went very far. I think Donald Trump's overriding, overwhelming priority is to get the troops home. I think that's what he did at the Pentagon. That's why he's bringing all these people back uh, from Afghanistan and Iraq. I think once he sees that under control, I expect the troops from Syria will follow. And I think the fact that Jeffrey has now admitted that they played shell games with him and that there's roughly 900 troops there, perhaps even 1,000 instead of the 200 that Trump was told, tells you, firstly, the problems Trump has faced and the enormous unyielding resistance of the bureaucracy and the extraordinary subordination with which he's behaved. But also, I'm sure, given that he is the president, the commander-in-chief, that will have enraged him, made him very angry, and it will make him determined to see this thing through. So I think that is his priority. I don't think starting another war in Iran was his priority. I absolutely don't think this is what he was up to do in the last few weeks of his, uh, uh, you know, until the inauguration. And I, I absolutely don't think that was his agenda at all. And I want to make it very clear that's my view. So I think this is probably some kind of a discussion that has been spun and made out to seem much bigger than it really was. That's my view anyway.
Yeah, I agree with you on that. I think the fact that he's pulling troops out of the Middle East is a uh, hint enough at, as to where his actions and where his thoughts lie. I think he wants to deliver one of his major promises, which is to get out of the uh, international entanglements. I also agree. I think I think the key here is the New York Times is saying that uh, Trump did receive a report from international inspectors that said uh, there was an increase in the country's stockpile of nuclear material. I think Trump called in and just had some more context. He called in to the meeting advisors, uh, Mike Pence, uh, Mike Pompeo, Christopher Miller, acting, who's acting defense secretary, and General Mark A. Miley, as, uh, who is from uh, the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. So Trump called these people in and the New York Times presents a picture like they talked Trump out of this. But I think the New York Times and other publications are running with this story, Alexander, from a paragraph further down in the New York Times article, which I think is the giveaway. And I'll read it to you, and I'm sure you'll figure it out as well as to why they're running with this story. Quote, the episode underscored how Mr. Trump still faces an array of global threats in his final weeks in office. A strike on Iran may not, may not play well to his base which is largely opposed to a deeper American conflict in the Middle East. But it could poison relations with Tehran so that it would be much harder for President-elect Joseph R. Biden Jr. to revive the 2015 Iran nuclear accord, as he has promised to do. So I think they're running with this story to make it seem like Trump now is going to look to poison every single well where President-elect Joseph R. Biden Jr. will come in and make right. They're, once again, I think they're trying to paint Trump as this orange man, bad villain. I think that's exactly right. I think that's, I mean, as I said, I mean, it would be entirely normal for the president to consult with his senior military advisors when he receives a report like this. It's entirely normal. And can I just also add that as far as Donald Trump is concerned, he is the president and the president-elect. That's what he's saying. So, you know, entirely normal for him to consult with people. And I agree. I think this is uh, um, spin, both from within the bureaucracy, you know, those four anonymous advisors. Of course, we have now reason to doubt whether these people have any, any real reality. As I said, this is what we discovered with the Miles Taylor episode that, you know, we were spun the story that there was, you know, this great anti-Trump, Trump Trump administration person who was writing op-eds and appearing in, you know, uh, 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 you know, writing books and all of those things. And it turns out that he was a very, very uh, middle ranking official, very far away from the Oval Office, probably only met Trump once or twice during all the time he was there. So, you know, I, I, I'm very sceptical about these reports, about anonymous people. When they come out in the New York Times, I'm even more, more sceptical. And, of course, there you have it. President-elect jo- jo- Joseph Biden, Joseph R. Biden, which he's not. I mean, he is not legally the president-elect. I don't know how many times we've had to say this on these programmes, but he is not the president-elect. There's been no certified result of this election so far. So that's the first thing. And the second is that, uh, um, you know, this attempt always to make Trump into the villain who's out to destroy everything and to start wars everywhere is utterly contradicted by his record, which throughout the period of his presidency has been one of retrenchment, a retrenchment obviously backed by strength. He's not run down the U.S. armed forces in the way, by the way, that Obama did. I mean, that was the opposite. Obama and Clinton were very aggressive, even as they were running the military down. Trump was the opposite. He strengthened the military and ended the wars, or at least reduce the wars to the extent that he could. But, I mean, I I don't get the sense that he's in any way uh, uh, looking to start wars with Iran or anywhere else at this time. And as the New York Times, the only thing in that paragraph that is true, as the New York Times rightly says, 
his electoral base wouldn't want it. So I don't think he'd do it for political reasons. I don't think he'd do it anyway, because it contradicts his stated policy, which at this time is to pull troops out. I will say one thing. I think Donald Trump has been looking to cut a deal with Iran at some point. I mean, he said so. I think that was his intention. I think he's, again, very frustrated that for all kinds of reasons, intransigence from Iran, if you like, but also sabotage from some of his own advisors, it never actually happened. So I think he's very frustrated about the Iran thing. But I don't think that was played any role in this. I think he was simply consulting his advisors when he got a worrying report and wanted to know what options there were. And that's fine. That's what the president is supposed to do. Yeah, I think uh, Trump would have liked, and it's still not over, I have to stress that, but I think Trump wants another four years because I think he does have a grand vision of some sort of big peace deal in the region. Whether you agree with it or not, that's not the point. I think that Trump definitely has an idea as to how he he sees peace in the Middle East. And I do agree. I think it did involve somewhere down the road, maybe in year two or three, cutting some sort of deal with Iran. Mm -hmm. Um, I I think it's pure projection what the New York Times is doing in other publications by saying that Trump is the is the evil villain that is going to strike Iran in order to poison the well for, you know, good old Uncle Joe who wants to come in and uh, and make peace and with Iran or in the region yeah. in general, when we know full well that uh, Joe Biden is going to come in and start all kinds of wars. I mean, well, we're that, already getting hits at, as to the people he's appointing that he would like exactly. to appoint to his uh, to his cabinet. These are all the neocons, all the neoliberals. I mean, there's even I'm even reading stuff about Dick Cheney advising Biden and be and becoming an actual advisor to the to the White House being appointed as an actual advisor. This is this is absolutely nuts. It's pure projection. This is all pure projection. Biden, when the New York Times makes articles like this and they project Mm -hmm. on Trump, what they mean is that Biden's going to come in and he's going to start all kinds of wars. That's exactly right. I mean, the person to look for 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 wars and who's going to start wars is Biden Harris. I mean, that's that's the agenda. Look at the people who are being lined up to take over the Pentagon if Biden becomes president. They are absolute war hawks. They are the old neocons, people backed by the Lincoln Project and all that sort of, all that crowd. They're all coming back. They all want, they're the people who want to start the wars. Donald Trump hasn't started any wars. He's been trying to end them, which is what he said he wanted to do. He's had all kinds of problems because the bureaucracy wouldn't support him. And dare I say, many people in the Republican Party wouldn't support him. But that's been his agenda, not to start wars, but to end them. Biden, Harris, and all those other people, that crowd, Dick Cheney, obviously, they don't want to end wars. They want to start them. That's what they're all about, too. And I think that's the point to hammer home. And I think for the New York Times, again, to rely on the New York Times on anything it says about Donald Trump is extremely dangerous and and utterly, you know, utterly misconceived because the the New York Times, what it says about Donald Trump is serially untrue. Remember, remember the, you know, the uh, payments the Russians were going to make, the bounties they were going to pay to all those Russians, to all those Afghan Taliban people who are going to kill Americans. Utterly discredited story. The New York Times still plugs it. So do the Democrats. So did Biden. So did Harris during the the debates. Now, as I said, we come with a new story that, you know, he's all out of launch strikes on Iran, just as he was going to launch strikes in on North Korea, and he didn't, just as he was going to start wars in all sorts of places, and he never did. It's the it's Biden and Harris who are going to start those wars, just as happened with Clinton, just as happened with uh, Obama, who started more wars, by the way, than anyone else. And by the way, if we're talking about Dick Cheney, well, when he when Dick Cheney was uh, vice president, all those wars in the Middle East, in Iraq, and all those other places, they began to. So, 
you're quite right, it's projection. It's also another attempt, I think, to tarnish Trump and to tarnish Trump's image. All right, we'll leave it there. Alexander Bear Curse, thank you very much, guys. If you like this video, click on the subscribe button down below. Smash that like. Also, check us out on BitChute. Check us out on Rumble as well. We are also on Odyssey, so you'll find our videos on all kinds of platforms. Also, please donate to us on PayPal, Patreon, and subscribe. Start your donation. It really helps out this channel a whole lot. It helps keep us going. And also, go to the Durant shop. Pick up some merchandise. I'm wearing a classic Durant t-shirt. This t-shirt, actually that I'm wearing Alexander. If you enter the Patriotic Legacy contest, use the code Duran20, get 20% off. Purchase the Beacon 3 flashlight. You can also win a Beacon 3 black along with this exact shirt. That's the contest. This exact shirt, the Patriot Beacon, that's the contest, Duran20, Patriotic Legacy. You'll find the link in the description box down below. Absolutely. And the reason you hear my dog barking, by the way, is that he's seen me wielding the Patriot Beacon and he thinks this means that I'm going to take him for a walk because that is exactly what I'm going to do when this uh, program ends. It's dark now and we go out with on our walks and my dog, of course, is going to be very excited because for him, the, the Patriot Beacon is a sign of freedom and the great outdoors. And of course, I can't take him out in the dark without my trusty Patriot Beacon, which is the best flashlight in the world. It is made in the United States. It is, it, uh, um, is supplied internationally. Wherever you are in the world, you can have it. It is the best flashlight in the world. It has a tremendous beam. Um, you can see what a powerful beam it is. You can lower it and you can have it flashing. It's got a compass if you get lost. It's solar powered. It's got a port so that you can recharge your smartphone and you can see how excited my dog is becoming. So I'm going to put it aside, but it's the best flashlight in the world. Um, it's made in the United States. It's made by our friends at the Patriotic Legacy. It comes with that glorious T-shirt that you see Alex wearing. You must join this competition and it's the Patriot Beacon 3. And that's Mishkin, my dog, barking away with tremendous excitement and anticipation as he knows that the walk is coming. And of course, can I also say on previous uh, competitions, when you've got the Patriot Beacon 3, you've got this amazing magic mug, which we make in our, sh which we have in our shop with the flag of the United States. They're the best mugs anywhere. They come with many flags of many countries, as do many of our shirts. We have beautiful shirts, like the one that Alex is wearing now, long-sleeved and short-sleeved. And we've also got polo shirts, and we've got hoodies, and we've got hats like this one here, which I'm going to put on now, even though, because, you know, it's quite quite cold and windy out there. So even, it's a, even though it's night, I'll probably be wearing it just to keep my head covered. And we've also got amazing e-books, which you can find too. And by coming to our shop, you support our brave channel and you can support us also by coming and finding us on patreon and on subscribe star and or, as alex rightly said in our various other platforms rumble odyssey library bid shoot and all the rest so support us in that way get yourself a patriot beacon three uh, uh buy these great things in our shop and uh log in to our next broadcast all right, Alexander Bear Curse, thank you very much. Until next time, everybody, take care.